But Ramesh Bhandari, last year, Sarabjit Singh had warned that, you know, there were guards in the prison who were threatening him. The Jamaat o Dawa, uh, Hafiz Saeed, also threatened him uh, after the release of another Indian prisoner, Surjit Singh, in Pakistan. This year, Sarabjit Singh was again threatened of the execution of Abdul Guru in India. How much is the attack on Sarabjit Singh looking like a premeditated conspiracy over there? I think that there is no doubt that this has been a premeditated uh, conspiracy. And it is. Yep, up, okay. Well, all right, not a conspiracy. Yes, it's a, it's, it is something which has happened uh, with the consent, in fact, approval, maybe even encouragement of the, of the, of the Pakistan government. And uh, they, they, they obviously do not wish Sarabjit Singh to come out, uh, to come, come uh, back to India and be able to say whatever he has to say. Of course, he has mo served more than his life term of imprisonment. I told it's 22, 23 years he was there in prison. And life term is pe perhaps you're saying, 16 Mr. Bhandari, years. You're, you're saying, Mr. Bhandari, that you believe the attack on Sarabjit Singh could only have happened after sanction from higher authorities. And high authorities could mean what authorities in Pakistan? Nonsense is this going on, well, that high authorities, etc. I mean, you have rational people sitting in the panel and they are saying that the government of Pakistan did this. For heaven's sake, come down to earth and talk rationally. Yeah, but Mr. Gohar, you can't. Even the, well, Pakistani, I mean, even the Pakistani human rights activist Ansar Bernie has said the attack yeah. is suspicious. No. See, within... May I give you an example? <laughs> Funny things happen uh, in the jails. Uh, I think most of your panelists have not been uh, in a jail or uh, seen a death cell or even hangings. I've seen 13 hangings in Peshawar jail in 1977. Now, what happens is that uh, these uh, uh, fights do take place. There's frustration. People are lying there for years. But in Mr. Mr. Gordo, you can't. Uh, Sarabji Singh has been complaining since last July that he's been threatened. He's been threatened by the prison guards. The Jamato Dava has also threatened him. He's already been threatened in the past. One can concede that, that he would be threatened being a, a spy who had been convicted, etc. But I do say this, that his security should have been further looked into. But to say it is so far-fledged, so far-fledged, that the flight of imagination of your panelists to say that the government of Pakistan says this. I mean, ridiculous, hilarious sort of uh, comments coming from there. Okay, uh, let me get a response uh, from the from the panelists who made that. Former Indian Foreign Secretary Ramesh Bandari, uh, what do you say to Gohar or you Khan? He's saying your, what your comments are fanciful. Well, uh, I, I think he would he would say say that I wouldn't expect anything else uh, from him, uh, but the fact does remain. I mean, I have been Lieutenant Governor of Delhi. I have seen Tihar Jail. I've been and visited them, visited the isolation cells also, and I can tell you that the treatment given there to those prisoners is uh, is uh, is very fair, and nothing happens in Tihar Jail. Right. Of this magnitude, okay. without without the orders of the highest authority. Okay. That okay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, Mr. Ramesh, Bani, pl 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 please stay over there. We also are now joined by the former chief of the ISI, Hamid Gul, joins us on the phone line from Pakistan. Hamid Gul, you've heard over there the former Indian Foreign Secretary Ramesh Bandari saying the attack on Sarabjit Singh could not have happened unless there was sanction in it from high authorities. What do you say to that, Hamid Gul? don't know how, what are you talking about because I was hearing I have just been connected to the studio please come again if you can explain to me yeah the former Indian foreign secretary Ramesh Bhandari saying the attack on Sarabjit Singh in the jail in Lahore could not have happened unless the attack had had sanction from higher authorities would you say to that no I think uh, India must give up its imperial arrogance every making Pakistan stand as a ripping boy and whenever there is something India blames Pakistan. This is not a good neighborly attitude. India has got to improve. But Mr. Hamid Gul, India is not doing the whipping over here. It's the Pakistanis who done the whipping on the Indian soldier Sarabjit Singh. He's the one who's fighting for his life right now in hospital in Lahore. Mama Sarabjit Singh, it's an individual act. It is not because higher authorities have said you attack and this, that, the other. I think you read too much between the lines and, and, and there is too much of bias. 
you want to make good friends with Pakistan, then come to the senses and talk about things which you blame it on government every time. And government is not there. Now there is an interim government. So you will blame it on the army that it is the army which must have, the ISI must have said nonsense. It's not correct. But Mr. Hamid Gold, you'll remember in January this year, another Indian prisoner, Jamail Singh, was tortured to death in the same jail in Lahore. And his autopsy report conducted by the Jinnah Hospital in Lahore said he had been tortured to death. Now my question is simple. How can that be happening inside a jail in Lahore without the complicity of high authorities then? I don't think so. This is right. With the high authorities, you are speculating higher authorities. I am saying that this is not true. Higher, higher authorities would not indulge in such a ridiculous kind of uh, uh, activity. They, they would not do that. But then how I are Indian soldiers being works. tortured inside a high-security jail? Jamail Singh's autopsy, a Pakistani hospital has said he was he had, had torture marks on it. He was tortured to you death know, inside the jail in Lahore. They are same high security jails in your country. A lot of things happen there also. Uh -huh. So exactly like that. There is a, a definitely a decadence in the system. It's Mr. Hamid Gol, when was the last time a Pakistani prisoner was tortured to death in an Indian jail? Can you give me one example? Okay, what do you want to uh, actually achieve? What do you want me to say? I will say that for you. No, no, no. I, okay? I'm, I'm, Higher authorities were involved. No, no, right. no, no. Because then you're are you saying you you're saying it happens in Indian jails as well. I'm trying to ask you, when was the last time it happened inside a jail here? It's happened twice already All right. in the last All four right. months do, in Lahore. The okay, okay. Do the same thing to Indian uh, Pakistani prisoners in Indian, Indian jails. That is what you want. No, I that, think you have to that is not be what rational saying. about it and, and talk about things so that we move forward in our relationship. Every time Indian media goes on Pakistan bashing for one reason or another, if there is a whiff of something, rumor, they will start reading too much into it. And uh, I, I think I, I don't know. It's not the age, frankly. Mr. Hamid Gul, one final question to you. It's a simple question. How would the Pakistanis feel if first in, in January this year a Pakistani soldier was tortured to death inside a jail in Delhi and again in April this year another Indian soldier is tortured, beaten up and is fighting for his life in a hospital in Lahore? Would the public and media in Pakistan not be outraged? I don't really remember the incident but if you say that it must be right, okay, if it is right then what are, what are you going to do, attack Pakistan? Is that the final act that you continue to increase tensions so that you eventually come in for uh, invading Pakistan? Your generals have been saying, your air, air chiefs have been saying, and they've been holding press conference in this regard. So, if that be your uh, final decision, then there's nothing we can do about it. All right, Mr. Hamid Gol, former chief of the ISI, thanks very much for joining us on NewsX. Mr. Shantaram Naik from the Congress, Last year, Sarabji Singh wrote to Sonia Gandhi expressing a fear for his life. Since last year, his sister Dalbir Kaur has also taken up the matter with the Prime Minister, the Home Minister and the External Affairs Minister. What has the government been doing since last year about these warnings which Sarabji and his sister have given about the threats to his life in Pakistan? The Indian government has been trying all the time showing concerns with whatever manner that was possible under international diplomacy. But may I know as to why but what is the mean? information given to the CID, CID official who accompanied the lawyer of Sarbajit Singh when he met, a name was given that so and so is trying to kill me. This name was given in front of the lawyer representing Sarbjit Sri and no cognizance was taken and on the contrary on the contrary they were all kept together so that to give opportunity to this prospective assailant to kill yeah, but Mr. Shantaram Nayak, that is and precisely today, my the question. The government the of government India of knew about all this. The but government please, of India please, knew please, that there was a please, threat to Sarabji's life. You are saying you expressed concern. 
You see, even I can express concern. But what does concern mean? What action did you do? Did you take it up with the Pakistani authorities? What action did the government of India take? Okay, uh, lost the audio line. We'll try and reconnect that. Sadanshu Mittal from the BJP. Could, uh, the, could the governor save Sarabjit Singh? Sridhar, let's look at the entire thing in a larger perspective. I mean, if you take it in isolation, probably what somebody will say, look, it's a one-off incident and all that. I don't want to take it in isolation. I want to see, I see a continuous pattern in this. We, you just talked about Chamel Singh's case. There is a man in the same prison in January this year who's brutally murdered. The autopsy, uh, autopsy report of the Pakistani hospital itself uh, says that he was brutally tortured and murdered there. Subsequent to this murder, the conduct and the seriousness with which Indian government should have pursued the matter leaves much to be desired. And I guess what has happened to Sarabjit is a consequence of the indifference the government has shown in the matter. Look, there is an impression which has gone around now that India is a soft state, a state where its soldiers can be beheaded, its uh, citizens can be brutally murdered in jail. All kind of things can happen to the citizens and soldiers and establishment of Indian okay. state. Okay, I'll tell you what, Sudanshi, because this you just raised the issue the of the beheading of the Indian soldier Hem Raj in January by Pakistan as well. Let's go back to Shantaram Naik of the Congress. Mr. Naik, you know, uh, Ch Sarabji's been attacked now. Chamel Singh was tortured to death in a Pakistan jail in January. Venkai and I do have said today the government is spineless. Even when the Indian soldier was beheaded, the government did nothing. What do you say to these charges? What what fine and what what fine the BJP government shows when there was attack in Kashmir? These people were hiding in the bus and injuring their family. That was not seen. What fine you are talking about? And today the government of Pakistan is describing that this injury that uh Arjun brought was in this couple. You are describing this attempt to murder as a couple. What else you can understand? You, you see, just imagine now, because of some assistance that our assistance is doing there, the assistance to put it in and jail was suspended. <coughs> what is the angle there? What is the drama? We don't know. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Mr. Shanta, I'm, like, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, you know there appears to be a little problem with the audio line. We just try and uh, you know fix that because your voice is not coming very clearly right now. But we now are joined by another former chief of Pakistan's spy agency ISI, Asad Durrani, joins us on the phone line from Pakistan. Mr. Durrani, Sarabjit Singh has been critically beaten in Pakistan. Chamel Singh, another Indian soldier, was tortured to death in the same jail in Lahore in January this year. Lance Naik Hemraj was beheaded by Pakistani soldiers also in January this year. You'll recall Captain Saurabh Kalia in 1999 during the Kargil War. He was burnt by the Pakistanis with cigarettes. His eardrums were burst. His limbs and private parts were chopped off. Why does Pakistan have a history of such barbaric behavior? I think you're talking to the wrong man. I had agreed to speak on India-Pakistan relations, not about what happens in the jails in India or Pakistan. Oh, but, th but this is By a very important issue uh, in terms of India-Pakistan relations. All right, Mr. Asad Durrani, former chief of the ISI, obviously skipping that question uh, and not taking it. Uh, the easy way out, I suppose, for, um, for him, but uh, we have that Zahra Ayub Khan, former foreign minister of Pakistan. Mr. Khan, perhaps you'd like to take that question. Because people are asking over here, why does Pakistan have a history of barbaric behavior? All right, so you can see over there, Mr. Gaur Ayub Khan, the former foreign minister of Pakistan, also cuts the lines. When the difficult questions come to the Pakistanis, they cut the line. They don't want to answer them. They're able to show barbaric behavior, but when it comes to answering questions on the barbaric behavior, their response is to wimp out. That is the reaction of the Pakistanis. But let's talk about the India side now. Sridhar, can, I say, can I say something? Yeah, 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 go ahead, Sudhanshu. Yeah. yeah. You know, 
what I was very disturbed when uh, one of the gentlemen from Pakistan was saying that the India, Indian media has a habit of uh, whipping up frenzy and all that stuff. Look, I mean, I have seen both sides. Pakistan does not even exist in the psyche of the average Indian, except for the fact when there are terrorist attacks or when such barbaric acts are done. Otherwise, India has really moved forward. Partition is history for the Indians, and in neither in our, our social life or cultural life or in our economic uh, well-being, Pakistan figures anywhere. However, it's the converse in uh, Pakistan. Their polity depends on India bashing. Their, their cultural life depends on the Bollywood. Their economic strength only comes from the trade with India. So, so you have to understand that there is a certain amount of obsession in the minds of the Pakistan establishment as well as in the minds of people of Pakistan. But you know, they are Sudanshu, very India looking. Yeah, but, you know, you know, Sudanshu, they, they, the they, bigger they, question right now, which I want me. to address. Sudanshu, I'll just come back to you. But let's go to Ramesh Bandari, Mr. Bandari. How much are the weak responses or the perceived weak responses of the government of India uh, responsible for the regular barbaric behavior of Pakistan towards our citizens? I don't think there has been any weak uh, responses. Uh, in fact, what question you're putting to me is quite opposite to what our Pakistani friends are saying the other side. Uh, take it from me. India would like to have the best of relations with Pakistan. The lesser, the fewer the incidents are like Sarabjit Singh, the better. But anyway, this incident has taken place. Now you've got Sarabjit Singh who's been thrashed, beaten up, which is, is, which, which, which is a fact. Now if that is also denied, I can only make one suggestion. Why can't we ask the Human Rights International Human Rights Commission to send a committee to Pakistan and verify all the facts? That's independent. They'll have, there'll be no Indian on it. Uh, let, let that commission go along and have a look at the situation of minorities, the state of minorities in Pakistan. Just All that's right. one right. main so bandit state of uh, minorities in Pakistan. But, uh, you know, Shant they can, they can Shant this here also. Yeah. Shantaram Naik of the Congress, Narendra Modi has said today that the case of Sarabjit Singh and also the Chinese intrusion into Ladakh is a proof of the failure and weakness of the government. How do you respond to this? <laughs> See, Narendra Modi's Modi attitude that. Mm -hmm. is towards the uh, towards UP government. You have seen and verified for last one or two years. The way he talks, the way he behaves, <coughs> as if he is the champion of some certain causes. And every blame he is putting on UP government. I don't attach any importance to Narendra Modi's story. Okay, okay, you don't attach importance to what Narendra <laughs> Modi says. So, so then I'll tell you what, let's try and attach a little bit more importance to what uh, our Union Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde has said today. Shantaram Naik, Shinde has said something quite shocking, I would say. He says that the land into which the Chinese have intruded in Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir is no man's land. It's disputed area. It looks like our home minister has already given up that land to China. Or at least he said that India has no sovereignty over it. What do you say to that? I, I can't say uh, what is happening in Loco or what is the l situation there in Loco. I cannot verify. But our feelings are patriotic feelings. And patriotism, I am I'm just expressing in a few words written by Kaisi Azmi some years back. Usme likha tha, kar chale hum fida janutan saathiyo, ab tumhare hawale vatan saathiyo. Saas thamti gai, nagma zamti gai, phir bhi hum ne kadam ko, hum ne nahi ruka. Sir, himalay ka hum ne na jukne diya. Aapko kya? Sir, aapko samaj hi nahi aaye, unho ne kya kaha tha? Jinda rehne ke mausam bhot hai mazhar. Unho ne kaha, chale hum fida, janet tan saathiyo, ab tumhare hawale vatan saathiyo, vatan dhiti na hamare hawale. Is patriotism ke principle se hum aage badhte hai. Yeah, but Mr. Naik, why don't you read that out, that poetry? Why don't you read the poetry out? Why don't you read the poetry out to the home minister Shinde? Shinde has said today that area where the Chinese have intruded into Jammu and Kashmir is no man's land. Our home minister has given away India's territory to China today. 